Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Making an Impact with Zebu Nation and today we're gonna get back to our regularly scheduled programming and we're gonna get back to week 10 of Major League Soccer I believe this is but anyway um, hopefully yesterday you saw our big triple live comic extravaganza the video turned out to be much longer than I kind of hoped it would be but there was a lot of sort of exciting games that we played. And as exciting as the games were, uh, they weren't all that successful. So let's take a look at the schedule. So we saw Friendly versus Bologna. 1-1, one, one, draw. That's fine, I guess. It's just a Friendly. Who cares? And then we played the Canadian Championship semifinals versus our rival, Toronto FC. And we had an exciting 3-3 draw in the first leg. That was at home, unfortunately. And then we lost the second leg 2-2 aggregate loss. Because they had, well not aggregate, but they had the most away goals. So we needed at least one more away goal in order to secure the championship. But we could not do it, so we are knocked out of the Canadian Championship. So it's going to be, uh, looks like no Champions League for us this season unless something happens miraculously during Major League Soccer. So we got to focus on that now. That's, that's all we got to focus on. Uh, unfortunately, last two weeks were also not that good in Major League Soccer because we got two losses. One against Atlanta United, 3-2, to two, which was you know pretty decent game, pretty exciting game. But uh, we just couldn't pull that one out at the end. And then we lost 2-0 again to Toronto. I'm sick of Toronto already. And this game was so frustrating. Because look at these guys. These guys are over here for Toronto. They are dying. 50% Vanderveel and an injury. Like Moro was injured. Everybody on their team was dying, was injured, was just tired. And they still managed to put us away. 2-0 so just uh, upsetting game we played pretty poorly especially our fullbacks again Taylor and Fisher played terribly brought in Hasler and he didn't play much better played a little bit better and just overall we had a lot of problems so we got to shake that off it's a new week it's a new schedule but we do have some lingering problems namely in the medical center so we've got Romero injured on the disabled list for six games with a hernia. Get out of here. Then we got our number one goalkeeper, Evan Bush. He was injured in that Canadian Championship game. He's out for three months with a hip injury. He's also on the disabled list for six games, so he's out of there. Then we've got some guys with injury risks. Andre, he seems to be susceptible to injuries maybe because he's only 19 i'm not sure but there's something about andre that makes him an injury risk so he's got very high susceptibility um so we're going to leave him out this week same with romero obviously he's on the disabled list so there's nothing we can do about that cabrera central defender he played just about every game in the last two weeks so he's he's had a heavy match load hasler maybe not so much but he's a little older and he's uh, you know got an above average injury risk so we got some injury risks and some injury problems and I thought about changing some things up and and bringing some players in but we don't really have the roster flexibility to do that at the moment I mean we do have two guys on the disabled list so we could bring in players if we wanted to and I thought about bringing back some of our loan players look here our players on loan this is a handy little screen in the squad status where you can see every player who's on loan and the good news is that our players most of them are out there on loan they're playing games are playing you know mostly pretty well um, win maybe not so much at Keflavik he is not playing well at all 6.1 rating so I thought about bringing him back but he was getting a lot of game time out there and he was looking like he was improving you know you see his his stats are going up for the most part 
So I wanted to leave him there, and then I thought about, well, we got Nick Dupuy, who's another striker we could bring in. But there's something about his contract that we can't bring him in. He's 23 years old, so I'd, I'd actually like to play him this season. He's a big dude, a big target man, 17 strength, 17 jumping reach, 6 foot 4 with 16 heading. So we could probably use this guy, especially, you know, if anything happens to Jackson Hamel, we could really use this guy for sure. But this was a pre-existing loan deal. I didn't set this up. The computer set it up two years ago. And there's something about his deal that won't let us bring him back. So I decided not to bring back any of those loan players except for one, one that we absolutely needed, and that was Maxime Crepeau, who's a goalkeeper because our starting goalkeeper is injured. He's 24-year-old Canadian, pretty decent. He's got a lot of nice technical stats. Mentals are okay. Physical's not that good other than strength. Um, he's he's just he's not what we want in a starting goalkeeper, but we're giving him a shot because Jop hasn't really secured himself in the job either. He's also only 24 years old. He's much better uh, reflexes and much better physically, but maybe not technically as good as Crepeau. So we're just sort of switching these guys out and seeing if one of them gets hot. You know, that's I mean, maybe that's more of a hockey mentality. When you don't have a number one goalkeeper, you just keep switching them out until one of them catches fire, and then you let that guy play. I don't know if you do that in soccer, but that's what I'm going to give it. That's what I'm going to try. So I might as well. Because the, the two guys are basically even. You know, they're both two and a half stars. There's not a lot separating them. So we'll give it a shot. Uh, right now, uh, Jop has played twice. We can take a look at that schedule again. Jop played against Atlanta United and Toronto FC, and he lost both games. Two goals and three goals, respectively, scored against him. And Crapeau has only played in one game, and it was a 2-2 draw, essentially. So he's kind of performed a little better. We'll give him a second game and see what he can do. So today we're going to play against the New England Revolution. Take a look at these guys. Take a look at their senior squad. What do they got going on? They got an injury to their fullback, Miller, who actually looks like a pretty good player. Roderick Miller, four stars from Panama. Yeah, he looks pretty good. So too bad he's out. Also, Nemeth, if you looked on the uh, the league stats, he's one of the leaders in, I believe, assists this season. So, Oh, no, he's one of the leaders in goals, and Yatun is one of the leaders in assists, if I'm correct. Let me... I mean, I could look, right? That's something you can do over here. So, yeah, there's the meth. Oh, he's average rating leader, 7.81. Also one of the leaders in goals, 10 goals on the season. And there's Yatun with seven, uh, seven assists on the season. So they're a pretty formidable combination. So we got to watch out for New England. And uh, also give a little shout-out to Kate from Old Lady, G Old Lady Plays, the YouTube channel here. On YouTube and she uh, she plays the New England Revolution in her save so go ahead and check her out if you're interested at all in some more MLS content and right now New England is in fourth place 23 points overall we're down here seventh place we're out of the playoffs which is not where I want to be we've only played 13 games I got a game up on us but we've only got 16 points so we need to win this game to jump back ahead of Toronto, which obviously we can't seem to beat Toronto head to head. So we got to find some other way to beat them out in the standings. But anyway, let's go. We're going to go with the 4-2-4. We're going to get back to basics here. Hand that over to the assistant coach. So yeah, we, we definitely hit a bumpy road in our schedule here with the injuries, with the cup games, just sort of back to back to back. And, um, Maybe the timing of that friendly wasn't too good either. But uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I was a little disappointed in that friendly is that our fans weren't even interested. They didn't particularly care about Bologna. You know, was, look at the schedule. Only 4,600 showed up, and that's, you know, half of what normally show up to our games. Half of what shows up to a, a bad game. You know, when you look at the Canadian championship game, Versus Toronto, we had 25,000 show up. 
No, they had 25,000 show up. We had 18,000 show up. Also not as good as I had hoped. But anyway. We're playing New England away, so we don't have to worry about that any of that stadium stuff. Oh, 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 oh. let's take a look at the squad. Just uh, the tactics, I mean. Just to make sure. I've been fiddling with my lineup just to make sure we got a healthy lineup in there. And it looks like we got everything we need. So we will submit that team and continue. So we got guys who are tired, guys who weren't particularly playing well. So we made some moves. First of all, of course, we got Kripo in at goalie. Goalkeeper. So we'll see how he does. Taylor and Fisher are going to give them another shot at the fullback position. Bringing in old man Watts at central defense. He's going to take the captain's arm bad, armband and deal him... Uh, deal him? Pair him with Diallo. That's, what, that's where that came from. Anyway, uh, yeah. So those two are going to be playing central defense for us. Got Piet. He's back. He's fully fit now from his injury. So he's playing more. We're going to team him up with the youngsters, Martin, who is also back from injury. So those two guys can hopefully start giving us some more depth in the midfield and, and some playmaking ability, especially with Martin. Raheem Edwards out on the left wing. Petrasso on the right. Jackson Hamill, of course, target man. And we're going to give Vargas a shot at striker, mainly because we're running low on strikers. Mancosu is also injured and out. I kind of forgot to mention that. But yes, Mancosu is injured, coming off an injury, and I didn't want to risk him in this game. So we got, uh, you know, a lot of injury problems. The MLS season is a bit of a grind. So you got to be able to manage your roster properly. I don't want to talk to you guys. New England, you know, they play in Gillette Stadium. It's a big, big old NFL stadium, and I just don't think they can quite get the fans to fill it. They need a, you know, slightly smaller, maybe a... Maybe a twenty or 30,000 seat stadium might be a little better for New England. But anyway, we had the corner kick there. Jackson uh, chases it down. Gets it to Diallo. Martin making a play forward to but Perez is there. But Martin gets it back to Jackson. Jackson, uh, I'd rather have him on the inside crossing it. But there's Piet. Look at the old man scoring. Samuel Pia. Actually, I don't think he's honestly that old. How old is he? He's 23 years old. He just seems like an old man, but he's not. He's he's a youngster by most definitions. All right, anyway. Uh, anyway, Jackson. I would prefer him to be in the middle, but if he can make plays like this, that was a nice pass. And then Piet, just a nice little shot. I don't, I don't agree with the tummy rub uh, head pats as a celebration, but you know what? Whatever floats your boat, I guess, especially if you're going to score goals for us. So it's nice to have these two guys off injury. You saw them immediately. Martin making some plays. Piet, obviously, with the goal. So those guys just give us some very, very nice, dependable depth in the midfield. And Piet could even be a starter for us uh, most seasons. I mean, he's listed as a first-teamer, so I guess uh, we should make sure we play him as a first-teamer so he doesn't get upset contract-wise. Anyway, that's a good start. That's definitely the kind of start I was looking for. We got to get off the schneid here. Anytime you start having bad luck after bad luck, it can kind of snowball on you in one of these FM seasons. So we got to uh, make sure it doesn't happen. We close down on Fagundes. Yes, yes, we just did that, right? Analysis. Defenders keep losing Yotun. We can't have that. You got to mark him down. Winning our headers. Eh, I don't think we need to do that just yet. We got a highlight. We do have a highlight. Here's Martin. Not a great pass forward. Perez gets it to win. Caldwell. Forward. Agudelo. Penilla. 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 Crosses it. Taylor is there. But there's Caldwell. Wow, what a shot. The sidekick for the goal. That's no good. We drop back to seventh position. Yeah, yeah. That was just some good stubborn attacking on their part. Pania gets by our defense. There's Taylor, the flying in. I like that. Unfortunately, the ball 
fell right to Caldwell, who one-timed it in the back of the net. Nemeth out. Injured. Get out of here. Anyway. McMath is their goalkeeper. He sends it downfield. Taylor wins the header. Edwards gets it forward. Vargas on the run. Let's see what he can do at the striker position. He's looking for some support. Can he get it to Jackson? There's Hamel. There he is. I mean, that's that's the strength of our team right now is uh, Jackson Hamel in front of goal. <clears throat> Caldwell is controlling the game, apparently, according to our assistant coaches. So we should close down on him. Fisher is being drawn away. That's fine. Perez gets the ball in the back line. McMath sends it forward. Diallo misses again. That's two mistakes on the back line by Diallo. Agudelo, got to check him. He's got a man in front of goal. Pania. Rapo could not stop it. That could be, um, could be something we got to get used to. Rapo not stopping shots, unfortunately. Agudelo. I mean, Diallo kept up with him, but then, um... Nobody marked old number 10 here. Bad news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, 2-1. How are we looking ranking-wise? Defensively, we are not looking good. All right, here's Piet. Let's see if he can make another miracle play. Gets it ahead to Vargas. Nope, Moore is there. But Fisher tracks it down. We got two minutes of stoppage time here. Edwards out wide. Back to Piet. Can he score another banger? No, nope. he's going to drop it back. 30 seconds into stoppage time. Edwards again using that pace to get forward. He crosses it in. Petrasso on the back post can't win it, but Martin is going to recover it. He sends it in. Jackson Hamel, there's another easy goal. For the aerial master, Jackson Hamel. How many header goals is that for him? Do they keep track of that? That's, I mean, that's at least three that I can remember. Trosso can't win. He's, he's not the same stature as Jackson, but there we go. Look at that. Easy. Nice setup. Again, there's Martin. And what Martin's got going for him is he's just technically very good. I mean, he's got skills, first touch, long shots. Um, passing, tackling, technique. So he's an interesting, interesting midfielder. And there we go. We got a 2-2 draw going in to the second half. Our defenders keep losing Yotun. But uh, let's worry about the pep talk right now. Um, It's Avenge, apparently, what happened last time against New England. Sure, let's do that. Let's see. Um, tactics. What do we want to look at? Do we want to do anything tactically? What are we up to here? We're just attacking. No sort of rhyme or reason to it. Tight marking. Okay, that's fine. This will start the second half. I did want to look at our instructions for these guys, though. We want to tightly mark Gadelo. Definitely want to close down on Yotun. Okay. Confirm those changes. Let's go. All right. Second half. Let's see a little bit tighter defense. Although we're not, you know, we're not in a defensive formation, even though we've got all of our defenders back there on the back line. Jackson looked a little offside there, but... Okay. That was an interesting move. Just let it roll back to the goalkeeper. You know, their defense isn't playing that well either. Their fullbacks, anyway. Their central defense is okay. It's pretty much mirrored the way we're playing on the other side. It says Taylor has a 6.3, but he seemed to be playing well. He's got an assist. No, he doesn't have an assist. Uh, Martin has the assist. But he's got a lot of headers on that back line. And maybe his headers haven't been going to the right people, but he's been winning them. Oops. Speak of the devil. He just lost one there. Watts has to cover up for him. 
Here's Jackson. Gets it to Vargas. Vargas returns the favor. Jackson Hamel behind the defense. Can't beat McMath. But we do get a corner out of it. There's LeBlu there in the corner. Petrasso sends one in high. Nobody goes for it. Yatun gathers it in, and there ends the highlight. All right. Okay, Jackson Hamel is killing it. Edwards is playing well. Also, 7.1 rating for Edwards. Piet, 8.2. Martin, 7.2. So we got just, you know, a few guys out there who aren't playing well. And, I mean, I guess, I guess Taylor is not playing well. So let's take him out, right? That seems to be what you do when, when that happens. Petrasso. Also not particularly playing well on the right wing. We could bring in Conier, who he, he's played well in spurts. So we'll see if he can give us a little spurt out there on the right wing. Um, do we want to send Conier on attack? I mean, statistically, he's not good. You look at him and you say, well, he's 21 years old. He's really incredibly average below average even in many respects compared to most MLS players but he just kind of makes plays out there so you know we'll put him in attack mode we'll send him after the goal and see what he can do you know right now his average on the season is really good it's above a seven but he did mostly play in the preseason so that could be him just sort of living off the fat of the preseason but here we go Rowe gathers it in for New England. Sends it out wide to Yutun. Agadelo forward. Oh, Pania misses an easy shot. That should have been a goal. It was a great setup. Our defense looked fairly lost. I don't know that bringing in Tran was actually a pretty good idea. He got beat pretty easily back there on the back line. We shall see. 75 minutes and rolling. Could be heading towards another draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing happening. Tactics. Raheem Edwards took a knock. Um, I don't think we have anybody who can come in for Edwards at the moment. No, we would have to change our formation. We could switch to a diamond formation. We could bring Vargas, you know, we could do this. Bring Vargas down there, bring in the rookie, or the academy player, Vasquez. See if Vasquez can uh, use some of that finishing prowess and get a goal. You know, he needs a little seasoning, there's no question. He's only 17. He only just turned 17, I think. No, he's still 16. So, he's a guy who shouldn't be on our bench, quite frankly. He should be in, in the uh, under-20s. But, uh, we don't have anybody else, so he's all we got. Tran, throw in. Got uh, 30 seconds left in stoppage time. Here's Martin, looking to make a play. He's got to drop it all the way back to Fisher. Fisher just boots it forward to nobody. Math scoops it up and looks like we're going to get an away draw here. There's 30 seconds left. It's not the worst result in the world. You don't really, uh, don't really cry too much over an away draw. But it would have been nice to pick up some points here. Pania. I mean, maybe we should. Okay, there we go. Tran. Good play. Gets it back to Krepo. Thank you. Thank you for being a good goalkeeper. And there's the, <laughs> there's the game. All right. Um, I'd be unhappy they couldn't hold the narrow win, but uh, you know, anytime you go on the road and get a point, I guess it can be considered a victory. Everybody thought we'd get beaten. Good on you. We just got to win some more home games. And good news is we got some home games coming up on the schedule. I think we got three in a row at home. So if we can pick up nine points there. That would be pretty fantastic and help us get back into the playoff race. 
see where this put us. Uh, competitions. Still in seventh place, still one point behind Toronto. So they also had a draw. We're within striking reach of Chicago. So again, it's all those teams we thought about that, uh, you know, we were going to be fighting with the playoff positions with Toronto, Chicago, New England. New York has. I can't. I guess I can't say they've dropped down. I guess New England has come on a bit. So we are seven points back of those two teams. So we got some catching up to do there. All right. So next on the schedule, I mentioned those home games. We got one. No, I guess we don't have three in a row. I thought we had three in a row. What's up with that game? Did one of them get rescheduled or something? Anyway, I could be thinking about the Clyde schedule because I was just playing a bunch of Clyde FC. But anyway, Orlando, Salt Lake, Seattle coming up next. So we'll probably play, we'll probably come back for the Seattle game. We'll play the Orlando because that's the last game of this week. Then we got two games coming up the week after. No, just Real Salt Lake. So we'll come back for the Real Salt Lake game in week 11. All right. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.